So today we're talking about reads. And what happens when you first start playing clarinet is a good read is a read that's not broken. Because you break reads a lot when you first start. And after a while, you're able to play a read for a long time. In fact, it, sometimes even your reads get really dirty because you've played them so long without breaking. Usually if a read looks dirty, it's definitely worn out. That's just a little clue. One of the first things I ask my students to do is to start rotating their reads. Reads change as we play them. They dry out and then they warp a little bit. They get wet again and then they dry out and they warp a little bit differently. The fibrils, which are the little tubes inside the bamboo that the reed is made of, those fill up with the proteins and minerals from our saliva and then they get stiff and they won't vibrate very well. And then we just don't get our best sound and we don't get our best tonguing response. It's harder to get a note to start. So all these things are not so good. And if we rotate our reeds, first of all, we don't learn how to play only one reed. We can be flexible and play any reed, even if it's not the best reed. And if we rotate our reeds, they get to dry out a little bit more and they tend to last a little bit longer. Also, we can rotate newer reeds and older reeds, and then you are start to become aware, you will become aware of what works best. So I like to rotate four reeds. I ask my students to rotate four reeds, two newer ones and two older ones. And gradually you'll start to learn where the older ones really wear out and don't sound so good anymore, or they don't seem to work well. And you'll notice when the newer ones start to sound their best for more than two minutes, they don't get that <laughs> kind of Donald Ducky sound. Breaking in a reeds, I like to play them for about five minutes and put them away. And then the next day I'll play them five minutes again and gradually I play them more and more. The thing we want our reed to be able to do is to play with a pleasant sound, support the high notes, start whenever we want it to at whatever dynamic we want it to, loud or soft, to play in tune and to tongue easily. This is a reed I like. I think it has a pleasant sound. <laughs> It's pretty well in tune. The high note It's pretty close. And I can play softly. And loud. I can play tongued. And it's pretty clear. So all of these things are great. The next read I'm going to play is definitely too soft. The high note just doesn't come out nearly as well in tune. And if I tongue, it's clear, but the sound sounds a little bit dull. I can play softly. And loud. But you can hear there's a definite change in the sound quality. One is kind of weak and the other is kind of harsh. This reed is really great for when you're feeling a little lazy. You don't want to blow too much. A lot of my students like softer reeds because they're easier to play. But as soon as you get to the high notes, sometimes they won't even come out. And sometimes they speak, um, they're just flat or they speak late. So one of the ways I like to test and see if my reed is too soft or too hard is to play double lip. If I play normally on this reed, I get that much sound. I'm going to play double lip as an oboe or a bassoon would do, tucking my upper lip under. And I get more sound actually because I'm not biting the reed off. It's just easier to play double lip on too soft a reed, but double lip is hard to do for a long time, so you don't tend to do it. I have two reeds here that look the same. They are the same brand, they are the same number, but one of them has an X on it and one of them has an H. The X is the reed I liked, the H is the reed that's a little bit too hard. So it's hard if you have a bunch of reeds as I do, it's hard to remember which is which, so I mark them in different ways. And I usually use a waterproof um, 
rollerball pen because it doesn't wash off over time and it doesn't come off on my lip or anything, but I can mark really clearly. So this harder read, I can get a pretty pleasant sound from it. If I play loud, if I play soft, There's a lot more air sound, and if I tongue, I'm leaking air because there's it's so hard for me to play that. It takes a lot of energy and my lips are just opening up. So a read that's too hard will make you tired really fast. It plays in tune like gangbusters. It's great for playing in tune. But that is only one thing you have to do. and so. Better to learn how to play a reed that's the proper strength, super in tune in the high notes, than to cheat and use a reed that's too hard because ultimately you'll get really tired as you play. So a reed that's too new, we talked about a reed that's too new will sound kind of spitty pretty quickly. A reed that's too soft doesn't play well in the high notes. A reed that's too old doesn't respond well when tonguing and it doesn't ever have a truly beautiful sound. And a reed that's too hard just makes us tired really fast. And it keeps us from being able to play quick tonguing beautifully or soft playing beautifully. So um, we will have a link. And that link will lead you to a number of different reed brands that I think are excellent. They work really well. One thing to keep in mind is the strength reed you use is not necessarily going to be the strength reed that your friend uses. The, how far back your mouthpiece curves helps determine the strength of your reed. If your mouthpiece curves back more than mine, you need a little bit softer reed so it can really go over. If your mouthpiece curves back less, you can use a harder reed because it doesn't have to vibrate as far. So, happy reading. <laughs>